God, hallelujah. How many of you are glad to be here in the presence of the Lord? Yes. Praise God. Ready to hear what God has to say. We already had a wonderful word about our toolbox, and we need that. Hallelujah. To uh, come back with the things that we are going through. And we know that through those things that God can help us. I want to be a good carpenter. I want to be a good mechanic. I want to use the right thing. I don't want to use I should be using a wrench and not using a hammer. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. God truly is good. I believe that the Lord, you know, has words that are very timely, timely, timely for each and every one of us. And hopefully this morning that this will touch your heart as much as it has touched mine. Turn to Isaiah chapter 59 and verse 19. It always seems like I'm going through something and the Lord gives me a word. Praise God. Isaiah chapter 59 verse 19. Just one scripture we read today. It says, So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and His glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Just a simple title. How to respond when under attack. How to respond when we're under attack. Amen? Praise the Lord. Can we just worship Him and praise Him? Hallelujah. We love you. We appreciate you. We are thankful, Lord, for the things that you have done so far. That, Lord, and we're excited about the things that is about ready to happen. That you will minister to each and every one of us. Help us, Lord, to grow deeper within you. Lord, that we will begin to show forth our praise, hallelujah, to this world. That this world will know, hallelujah, from the rising of the sun to the sitting down of the same. Hallelujah, your glory and your wonders. Hallelujah, that they will know that there truly is a God. Lord, that, that all those that think they know better, how, that they will come under subject. As the word says, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall come fast. Hallelujah, that Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah, and I'm glad that I know you today. I'm glad that I see you today. In Jesus' wonderful name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why don't you tap your neighbor on the shoulder and say, you need to hear this today. Praise the Lord. Tap your neighbor on the other shoulder, on the other side and say, yes, and it's for you too. Praise God. You know, the reason why I did that is to make sure we're all awake. Praise God. You may be seated. God is good. Praise the Lord. I have found that uh, through the news and the different things that we are reading that we, the church, is uh, prime targets of the enemy. Even though the enemy is also uh, man's you know, enemy. Our enemy, I find, has begun to intensify. It just seems like things are being more intensified against the church. And the reason why it is that way is because he knows that his time is very short. He knows that he does not have much time left. And so he's beginning to intensify. He's beginning to get the world to come against us. At one time that America enjoyed the fact of knowing that there was a God that you know was on their side. But less and less people are going to church. And less and people are even you know obeying God what the Word of God has to say. In fact, a lot of them are saying that it's nothing more than just a myth and that the church is trying to, you know, restrain people. It seems like sin is on the, you know, is more abound than ever before. But I'm so glad in the Word of God that it says when sins abound, that grace much more abounds. Hallelujah. And so the reason why uh, we're in this season I believe that we're experiencing these strange things. 
of many things that are, you know, not just in our physical bodies, but we're also beginning to, you know, experience it in our spiritual bodies as well. In fact, most of us are the things that we are facing, hallelujah, you know, is the things that is in the thought process. Some of the things that we are facing right now, I don't know about you, but I thought at one time that I had overcome. And now these things are coming back upon me. You know, so we need to understand as a child of God that we need a mindset. Especially those, hallelujah, that has a determination that they want to reach their destiny in Christ. That we should not be surprised about this intense attack that's yeah. coming against us. Especially that, that uh, attack of that overwhelming feeling that you just want to, you, you feel like you're defeated. You feel like, you know, like nothing seems to go your way. And so, you know, we, we, we're under this attack, you know, to the point that we wonder, you know, sometimes if we're ever going to get out of this. You know, why am I going through this again? You know, like just, you know, past, you know, a few weeks, our, our, our car. I know that Sister Bishop had prayed for a motorcycle. She always wanted to ride a Harley. And, uh, you know, and God answered our prayers to some degree. You know, we just didn't expect our journey, you know, to sound like a, you know, a Harley. And, and, and sometimes it's kind of embarrassing, you know. You come out and you, you start this thing up and everybody looks to, you know, to see where it is. And, no, it's just my journey going, you know. And so, you know, you think that you're, you're over the financial difficulty sometimes and, and all of a sudden this falls apart. And our, you know, our dryer, you know, you know, fried on us. And I don't know how many dryers I bought, but I'm getting tired of buying them. You know, but the thing is, is that, so you come under these attacks and you feel like, you know, what's the point anymore? But I believe, hallelujah, that God, as we've learned today, has given us in our toolbox, hallelujah, you know, a something to combat this overwhelming feeling of defeatedness, you know, being defeated. The psalmist gives us one, hallelujah, an ammunition against this demonic spirit. He said, I will rejoice at the hands of the word of God. Hallelujah. Because in the word of God, I find a treasure. I hate and despise lying. Hallelujah. Those things, those lies that come up against me. I believe in his law. Sometimes a day will I praise the Lord because of your righteousness. Hallelujah. Great peace will I find in the word of God. And nothing will cause you know, me to stumble. Hallelujah. Because I put my hope and my trust within him. Hallelujah. What is the psalmist telling us? That we are to be consistent in going to the word of truth. Hallelujah. Why? Because he's the only one that can fight against the lies of the enemy. Hallelujah. He will fill our soul, hallelujah, with praise unto Him throughout the day. Hallelujah. Even though we're facing these things, to know that we will not stumble because He is with us. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, I don't know about you, but I'm excited about what God is about ready to do in this season. Yes. Hallelujah. That should give us a word of great encouragement. Oh, I'm going through this, but God's not going to allow me to stumble if I begin to worship and praise Him. Hallelujah. Oh, when we're facing this, wherever the devil throws at us, Hallelujah. I'm not going to whine and complain. I'm not going to feel sorry for myself about the things that are happening. Hallelujah. But I want the world to know that I'm going to rejoice. Hallelujah. That I'm going to praise Him. The reason why I'm going to rejoice and praise Him. Hallelujah. Because I know a God that's able to deliver. Hallelujah. In fact, you know, a lot of times I've been hearing about, you know, different people saying, I'm going through this. It's almost like they're, you know, in despair. You know, that should give us, you know, great hope that we're going through something. Because through our seasons of struggle, that means that there is an entrance. Come on. Think about it, that there is an entrance, but not only is there an entrance, but there is an exit. 
And so what we're going through right now, hallelujah, through this intense thing, hallelujah, is that God is putting us through the corridor, hallelujah, of a better and greater dimension. So we don't need to pout, hallelujah, but we need to shout. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. It may feel like the midnight hour. It may feel like it's the darkest of moments. Hallelujah. But I'm not going to lay down in defeat. Hallelujah. But I'm going to say, hallelujah, I will rise as the psalmist said in 119 and 62. I will rise in this midnight hour and give thanks unto my God. Hallelujah. Because I'm excited. Hallelujah. About what's going to happen. Hallelujah. Oh, and so Micah said, do not gloat over me, my enemy. Don't you think and snicker and sneer at me. Because though I have fallen at the moment, I will rise. Though I sit in the darkness at this moment. Oh, the Lord will show me the light. Hallelujah. Oh, come on now. Why are we going through this? Because God is about ready to show you a better way, a light unto each and every one of us. Hallelujah. One thing that he'll show us that yes, our days are short and full of trouble. Yes. Come on. Every man that is born of a woman goes through some troubles. That means that your neighbor, hallelujah, goes through trouble. Yes. That means that those that you feel that being more blessed than you are, go through trouble. You look at the world and you say, God, you know, they're driving these wonderful, you know, automobiles and living in these big fancy homes and you know, and, and some of them have money and they're using it for evil and you're wondering, you know, God, how do you, but they go through trouble. But oh, hallelujah, if you're a child of God and knowing that everyone goes through trouble, that means, hallelujah, that as a child of God, we are going to go through more intense. I said we're going to go through more intense trouble. I'm sorry to tell you that, but you're going to go through it. Hallelujah. And the reason why is that we need to understand that what we're going through is not by happenstance. That's right. right. What we're going through, you know, is not by accident, but it's, there is a purpose. We need to wake up. We need to realize that we're going to face this intense struggle. Hallelujah. Especially if you're a person that says, I have a mindset. I want to do something for Jesus. I'm going to reach my destiny no matter what's happened. So get ready. Hallelujah. The reason why you're going through the things that you're going through is because you got the devil stirred up. He doesn't want you to reach your destiny. But hallelujah. But oh. And so I'm going to reach my purpose no matter what I go through. Hallelujah. Oh, the devil's a liar. Yes, and we need to understand something. Even though, hallelujah, you're going through some intense things. It's not because you have, you know, caused, you know, somebody to be upset. Understand that when David decided, hallelujah, that he was going to, you know, reach his destiny. As he came onto the battlefield, it was only to come to feed his brothers. That's all he was going to do. You know, bring lunch to them. And what happened was that he began to hear the cry of, you know, uh, a monster on the other side. A huge man that stood about nine foot five. Hallelujah. And he was screaming and shouting, you know, things at the, you know, the children of God as they cowered in their tents. And so all he asked one question, and it got everybody upset. And that was, is there not a cause? Yeah. Hallelujah, is there not a cause today? Hallelujah, as we stand up against sin, as there's been sin taught in our schools, as there's been sin, you know, marching on the streets, we need to understand, is there not a cause today? Hallelujah, is there not a church that will stand for truth? I'm not going to cower and allow Hallelujah to rule our pulpits. I'm not going to let sin rule our church. Hallelujah. I'm going to stand up and say, is there not a cause? Hallelujah. As he heard this, he decided I'm going to fight, you know, for something. Hallelujah. I'm stepping in my destiny. What happened? Hallelujah. 
it was that all of a sudden Saul became angry with him. What did he do? All he did was defeat the enemy. But we find, hallelujah, because Saul refused. The man of God refused to fight the enemy. Hallelujah. The one that was head and shoulders above all men, hallelujah, refused to you know, fight him. He became an instrument in the hands of the enemy. Hallelujah. So when a person comes under attack, you must make a decision. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what others are saying about you or thinking about you. You, you know, you can either cower in fear, hallelujah, or you can move forward. And I don't know about you today, but I have decided I'm going to move forward. But understand, if you're going to move with me, that is not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy. Hallelujah. You know, some things that, you know, when we go through, it's like being in solitary. I'm all alone. Nobody else is, you know, with me. It seems like I'm in the dark. But I don't know about you, but when you're in a solitary perfect place, that you need a make a made up mind. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to back out. Hallelujah. But I'm going forward. I don't know about you, but I refuse. Refuse to quit. Hallelujah. Tell yourself, I refuse to quit. Hallelujah. God got something great in store for my life, and I don't know about you, but I don't want to miss it. I believe I'm not giving up yet because I believe that God's got something great in store for this church, and I don't want to miss it. I'm tired, hallelujah, of somebody that just been in the church for a few months, and God's doing some wonderful things for them. Yes, I'm glad for that, but I don't know about you, but I'm not going to allow somebody else to steal what God has for me. I want to reach my destiny. I'm determined. Hallelujah to reach what God has for us. We find in our scripture text today that Israel was cowered in fear. The reason why was because they were being attacked from the north with Syria and also their brethren Israel. They also felt the great pressure of, of Syria coming upon them from the west. This mighty nation. They, un they heard the things that Syria had done. And so they did not know the way of escape. They didn't know what to do. You know, Syria was saying, if you just bow down and, you know, and follow after our ways, then, you know, then we will protect you. But we understand, you know, under we need to understand victory does not come at what we see. Victory does not come, hallelujah, on, you know, on what it seems to be. But victory comes upon, hallelujah, what we say. Isaiah said, you know, you need to understand what you say is very important to your victory. We need to understand that, that, um, that what comes out of your mouth is death in life. Hallelujah, there's power in the tongue. Oh, is this the Proverbs 18 and verse 21 says that death and life is in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of eating sour fruit. I want to eat something good. Come on. Right. Hallelujah. We need to understand that these portals that we have, these ears, hallelujah, these eyes, hallelujah, that we see in this mouth that we speak are only portals. Hallelujah. They have power to produce life Hallelujah for our destiny. Come on. The enemy is trying to defeat oh, us. Hallelujah. hallelujah. By what we proceed to see and hear. Come on. Right. Things that we know that are not to be true. Oh, God has forsaken me. God has given up for me. We're, you know, we're on the wrong end of the stick all the time. You know, when it comes to blessings, we come up short every time. You know, uh, we, we need to understand that these lies that we hear are nothing more than trying to, to tank our faith. And it's nothing but garbage. Yes. Right. I said it's nothing but garbage. Yes. It's nothing but falsehood. Yes. Hallelujah. We, you know, we need to protect our, you know, our portals. We need to protect those things. 
Hallelujah. We need to understand, hallelujah, what Paul was saying in Romans chapter 10 and verse 17. That faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm going to fill my heart and my soul with the Word of God. I want to be my ears, my portals, hallelujah, to hear the Word of God. I want to see, hallelujah, what others cannot see. I don't want to just see in the natural realm, but I want to see in the spiritual realm. Hallelujah. So if this is true, you know, that faith cometh by hearing, what about doubt? What about doubt? If this is true, hallelujah, that what comes by hearing, what about disappointment? What about disappointment? What about worry and fear? Hallelujah. But what about hopelessness? Hallelujah. That we feel sometimes. Depression also comes by hearing. Hallelujah. What we need to do, these things that we hear, these things that we see, those things, hallelujah, that come into our life, they're nothing up more than trying to cut and choke the Word of God out of our life. Yes. So when the enemy comes in like a flood, that means when the enemy comes in, how overwhelming us with everything, you know, from the outside and the inside, and, you know, it feels like we're being swept away. Hallelujah. That we are to believe and hold on to the word of truth. That the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against Amen. him. Hallelujah. The God inhabits the praise. Yes, amen. The God, hallelujah, 
comes and makes a comfortable place. <laughs> that means he's setting up shop. Right. Hallelujah. That means, hallelujah, that when every line spirit comes my way, you may be seated for a moment, that we have the power over those things by being selective. We can focus on the trouble or we can focus on God. Right. Hallelujah. Oh, as Paul said, forgetting those things that are behind. Hallelujah. Thinking those, all those things, hallelujah, is nothing but garbage. But all oh, the things that bind me. Hallelujah. The things that hold me back. Hallelujah. Those things that cause doubt, frustration, and fear. Hallelujah. These spirits that come against me. That I can bind them up. Hallelujah. That I have made a decision. That they're not going to hold me back. And the reason why, hallelujah, is because of what James said, that I'm just asking for wisdom, hallelujah, and that God will give it liberally. And so what the wisdom I'm asking for God at this hour is, hallelujah, how to execute, hallelujah, what I already know. Come on, it's to execute what I already know. Hallelujah, and it's that in those situations that we are to pray. Hallelujah for the power of God to move in this situation. We don't need to be praying, you know, pretty little prayers. We don't need to be praying those fancy prayers. God's not asking for that. Some people will say, you know, I wish I could pray like so and so. I used, used to remember a man in our home church would stand there and he would pray these beautiful prayers. And I thought, man, God, I wish I can do that. You know, because I don't know how to pray. And God said, I'll teach you how to pray. You know how he taught me when I went through some trials and tribulation. It wasn't the pretty prayers that got me through. It was, oh God! some warfare that oh he's looking for men hallelujah that knows how to stand in the time of trouble why is the, our opening scripture you know what's today the Lord is good and a stronghold and the day yeah. of trouble yes Babylon may be coming against us but I want you to know the Lord is good and a stronghold in the day of trouble and I'm going to use the messenger Bible a little bit and it says and he stands alongside point that my enemy, not me crying unto God, but my enemy will cry, hallelujah, to the surrender and God in fear. Yes. Why? Because so shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west. And his glory from the rising of the sun, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall set a standard against him. Hallelujah, anything that comes against me and from reaching my destiny, hallelujah, is trying to get me to die. Hallelujah, I want you to understand, those things must die. I said, those things must die. How do they die? Hallelujah. You lying spirit, I want you to know right now that yes, my God is God. Oh, God's forsaken me? Uh-uh. My God is here. My God knows what's best for me. And watch out, devil. Hallelujah. When, oh, when I begin to worship and I begin to praise Him, when I begin to shout unto the Lord, you may bind these hands and you may bound, shackle these feet. But when I begin to worship Him in the midnight hour, then oh, I give Him thanks for all that He has done. Hallelujah, that the glory of the Lord comes down. Hallelujah, and He begins to say, I'm going to make a home right here. Come on, church. I'm going to make a home right here. What are you going to do right now? Are you feeling, hallelujah, the overwhelm? Are you feeling that frustration right now? Why don't you open your mouth, hallelujah, and begin to use it against the enemy. Not to destroy or defeat what God is doing for you. Not to set you back, but shout out to God. Hallelujah, I'm ready for the new. Hallelujah, I'm ready for the new. Come on. Come on. My 
ministry ain't going anywhere. No, that's a lie from the enemy. No, your ministry's going somewhere, honey. All you need to do is start to shout it. Hallelujah. That's a promise. God has seen if you can handle this. Oh, yes, I can, Lord. Not on my own. But to know that when I'm weak, you are strong. Hallelujah. You may be strong right now, enemy. But I want you to know that greater is in any lie that the world can offer. Can we just stand right now? I want us to bring our three boys to the front. Hallelujah. It saddens me what I've been hearing. Hallelujah. You want to know something? We can cower in fear, but it's not my righteous indignation. The enemy knows if he can get our children. That he has destroyed our now. We need to pray, hallelujah, for our kids and his parents as priests of our homes, we need to see what they've been taught at school. I'm thankful that we have a governor that says, you know, none of this critical race teaching in our schools, none of this homosexuality stuff. But they hear it all the time. And they're saying that more and more are being accepted of this. It's coming in like a flood. And we need to pray for our kids. Because what it really is doing is destroying the moral fabric of our country. Come on. Oh, we're just, you know, being more tolerant and accepting. I heard about the one they were talking about the Catholic Church. And they're saying that there's a battle going on in the Catholic Church because they want the priest to be more tolerant. We're already seeing it in, in our Protestant churches. They're being more tolerant. But I want you to know it doesn't matter what other churches are doing, that this church refused to be tolerant of sin. Yes. We love the sinner. We despise the sin. Come on. That sin, sin may come in like a flood. But oh, hallelujah. Yes. But the Spirit of the Lord. Come on. The Spirit of the Lord. I said the Spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. That means it will go with our boys. That means it will go with every child that goes to Sunday school. That means that it will enter every church. The Spirit of the Lord, they're sweeping across Africa. The Spirit of the Lord is sweeping in you know, Central and, and South America. The Spirit of the Lord is sweeping across Europe. Hallelujah. The same Spirit at one time swept across America and oh. Canada. It's the same Spirit. Hallelujah. It's going to once again move. Hallelujah. Because there's going to be, hallelujah, revival from the... You know, from the south to the west, to the north, from the west to the east. Hallelujah. Come on. Let's worship the Lord. Hallelujah. They will shout no. They shall know. There will be a fear of the Lord. 